Good day, folks. Today I'm going to be reviewing a game called 221B Baker Street, the Master Detective game. This game came out in 1975 and it is for two to six players. In this game, you are going to be playing the role of Sherlock Holmes and you're going to be wandering through the streets of London, going to different locations and trying to pick up clues to solve murder cases. Now, the game comes with several murder cases. They come in these little books. And uh, ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to be the first detective to solve the crime, to solve the mystery. And the way this works is you're going to be moving around different locations of the board, picking up clues, and you're also going to be able to uh, lock your opponents out of certain places, and you're also going to be giving keys in order, case you get locked out yourself. So let me go ahead and show you how this game works. Okay, so i got the board set up over here. I'm just going to show you a few of the uh, components here. Right here you have uh, one of the sets of the cards that this com game comes with. Uh, this particular one has the rules and also the clues and case solutions for the first set. And these are the cards that come with the first set. Now each set comes with 20 cards. And I believe there's about 8 or 9 different sets that are available that you can get on the internet if you so desire. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be picking a card. In this case I'll pick the first one. And it's going to talk about what the case is about. In this case, a strange preacher has come to town, a large Moroccan-bound Bible under his arm. Scotland Yard is puzzled when the preacher is found stabbed to death in his balcony seat at the playhouse during a performance of Hamlet. And these cards are going to go ahead and give you some more information about uh, some of the uh, suspects in the case and uh, just give you a little bit of information about them. And ultimately, what's going to happen is near the bottom is going to say what you need to do. In this case, it says, Scotland Yard wants to know who killed the preacher, the weapon, and the motive. The game is afoot. Okay, and on the back over here, this uh, gives you the location and then a the number. Now, the number um, corresponds with what is in this book. You're going to basically turn to this clues section over here that have these different numbers in here. So anytime you walk into a certain room, say you go into the bank, you're going to go to clue number 11, and then you're going to read clue number 11, and then write it down on this handy pad over here. Um, this is basically your checklist. This uh, gives you all the rooms and anytime you pick up a clue from these rooms you're just going to write down uh, whatever you need to write down. There are two different types of clues in this game. You have the general clues and then you have the killer clues. The general clue is uh, going to be just a general clue about a weapon or a person or something like that while the killer clue is usually done in four parts. Each of the four parts is going to be found in a different room or different location. And a lot of times they're going to be done in a riddle form. So not only do you have to try to get into as many of those rooms as you can to get those killer clues, but you also have to be able to solve the riddles in order to solve the case. Now, each person is going to receive one Scotland Yard card, and they're also going to receive one skeleton key. Now, they're going to be able to use these throughout the game, and they can only hold on to one of each of these cards at a time. The Scotland Yard card is going to basically lock out a room um, in case, like, for example, let's say I roll the dice and I end up here at the museum. I can pick up the clue at the museum, and then if I want to, I can put this there just to show that that room is now locked. And in order for somebody to get into that room now, they're going to have to have a skeleton key. So anyway, the way it works is you're going to roll the dice and you're just going to move that number of spaces. And uh, you're just going to keep on rolling until you get to one of these arrows over here. Then you're going to go into the room and what you'll do is you'll go to the card and um, you will simply look up the number here. And then from here you'll go to where the number is in the book and then you'll write down uh, what it says. In this case it says no clue. So you'll just write that down. So you'll just write down over here. So essentially what you're going to do is everybody's going to be moving around the board to different places and they're going to be uh, just getting clues. Now, um, if you end up in a room that has one of these things here, again, if, if you want to get in there, you're going to have to get a skeleton key. Now, you can use the one skeleton key that you have, but if you run out, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get over to this spot right here and pick up a key for yourself. And um, same with this. If you want to get a lock, you can just simply go down to the Scotland Yard and pick up a lock, and that way you'll be able to play it whenever you want and whenever you want. However, again, you can only have one key and one of these Scotland Yard cards in your hand at one time. So there's a place called the Carriage Depot over here. If you get over here, you can actually get out right here and then move to any spot on the board that you want. So this can be a very helpful tool. Anyway, what's going to happen is throughout the game, you're eventually going to go to as many rooms as you can. And then when you think that you have solved the puzzle, you're going to go back to the start and then you're going to reveal the answer. Now, the important thing is 
is that you have to have all these answers right. In this case, they want the preacher, the weapon, and the motive. So if you uh, miss one of these, then you're going to be out of the game. The solutions in this are pretty detailed. You don't have to have every single detail correct. You basically just have to have these three things right. It's a pretty little unique game, especially if you like Sherlock Holmes and those kinds of stories. Uh, it's a cool little game. You can actually still get this game, I believe, in certain stores.